Here we go again, man. Here we go with another point guard's perspective, and you're rocking with your host, Nick Taylor. All right, today we're diving into the WNBA again. Angel Wilson, these women just cannot seem to stay out of thing. Like nonsense every week, every day. She already had the whole thing earlier in the week about Kelsey Plum and you know and and how these white girls have everything you know handed to them. They're you know privileged and and things in that nature and you know right to her teammate like and. And I'm just sitting back here. It's like she says she wants to, should take the villain role, but in the you know in the same perspective, she wants pity. I, I just don't get these new age people. Y'all wanted us to come and watch this league. We came and watched this league, but what y'all are not understanding to whom much is given, much is expected. And what comes with that, it's going to be a lot of trash talk. It's going to be people talking. It's going to be trolls. Like, that's what's the, this, this, that's this era. Like, that's what's going on nowadays. Everybody's going to troll. And nobody trolls y'all before because nobody cared. So it's not that you can have nobody care about your game and you don't get trolled. Or you can have people tuning in and watching and, and you making money off of it and and, and everything that comes with it, and you get trolled a little bit. People on online, they talk crap. People like the games, they're going to talk crap. That's just sports. Y'all can have 3,000 people at y'all games again, and nobody give a damn. Or y'all can be selling out arenas like y'all are doing in Vegas. It's a smaller arena. Or y'all can have the new people that have come in to see Caitlin Clark. And support the league, or I mean, even if they are watching just Caitlin when she plays, you show up and you make people say, Damn, we have to watch you too, or enjoy what you do, also. But all we get on our complaints and complaints, and and now everybody is racist, and and as a black player, and and as a white player, like every everybody's complaining and crying now, and that's just not how we grew up, like we in race people talking shit we came back out there and we smacked you in your arena and then we walked the fuck home and we laughed about it or we talked crap back to you if the fans talk crap to me i'm talking crap back to you i played football i played in front of 30,000 35,000 40,000 so that's more than these women are playing in front of so you could say i didn't you know i wasn't in the nfl long or i've been in the cfl but i played in front of 35 40k people easily you know Literally in Winnipeg, all our games were sold out. And when we went to other games, I embraced the crowd talking trash or talking shit to me. That was just fun. I either talk shit or I shut up and I bust their ass and I laughed about it after. But y'all people want y'all cake and y'all want to eat it too. I know that's not the saying technically, but that's what the saying is now. Y'all know what the hell it means. Y'all want everything that comes with with, with with making more money and, and, and getting more eyes on y'all, but y'all don't want the backlash. It's it's natural. That's what LeBron James deal with. Stephen Curry deals with. That's what Chris Paul, James Harden, Paul George, all these players in the NBA, that's what they deal with. And it's out of day. They come out here and they clap back and they respond or they, 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 they stay on social media. You don't have to be on social media. You don't have to be. If you don't want to be, you can stay away from all the noise of social media. Now, when you go to the game, you might have people talking crap to you. But that's just sports. And then she, she's barking about the, you know, I, you know, Indiana was the worst place, you know, and I don't know. I just, you know, didn't know. I didn't want things to pop off there. Those fans or people there, they don't care if you're purple, blue, pink, orange. If you come through that arena, you're not representing their team. Like most places, especially back in the 1990s and 2000s, if you're not a part of that team, the 1980s, you're not a part of that team. They're rooting hard against you, and they're talking crap to get in your head so you can play like crap so their team can win. That's why it's called home court advantage. 
home court advantage. And this new age of sports is taking away what home court advantage was. As long as those people don't come out there and put their hands on you or anything, they're just saying words. Then you eat those words up and you go about your business. You can talk shit back to them. Embrace it then. Talk shit back to them. But if we saying, hey, we're going to be the villains, that's okay. And then you come back and you you want self-pity. I just don't understand it. I never was a part of that. I never enjoyed that. That's not how I was raised. That's not what I grew up on. I grew up on you being hard and thick-skinned when you play sports. And you don't let shit bother you. If you let shit bother you, that just means that you're mentally weak. And you probably shouldn't be playing. And if you don't want to play, then don't play. But I never heard nobody really have a problem with Asia Wilson. I think everybody, for the most part, thinks she's a good person who's a three-time MVP who plays good basketball. What is her game boring to some people? Yeah. Tim Duncan game was boring to people, but people still respected him and understood what he brought to the game. He was a jump shooter. Yes, Caitlin Clark brought more eyes because of how she played. And not just because she's white. And I know people saying that. Sabrina Ionescu's white. Brianna Stewart, white. And we don't care to watch those people play. And Sabrina could shoot it. It's just something about Caitlin that has garnered our attention to gravitate towards her. How she passes, how she plays up tempo, how she's willing to shoot, you know, 35 footers and then it goes in sometimes. And, it, and it's, it, it, it grabs our attention, and that's what makes them different. But all y'all have to do is embrace it and then play off of that, you know. If she's in the spotlight, stand to the person, stand next to the person in the spotlight and make us remember who the fuck you are. But y'all have been fighting the spotlight the whole time instead of embracing the spotlight, getting in the spotlight and showing us who the fuck you are. But no, that's not what y'all want to do. Now everybody's coming out of this, you know, they're, they're, they're talking crap about us. They're being racist response. Yeah, that's been going on forever. And it's never going to change. It's never going to change. Gradually, we get less and less people. But there are always going to be people who are doing nonsense. And it's just what it is. Play ball. Go out there and win. Do what you have to do on the court. And... You're saying that the black athletes are getting it. I I, I tell y'all who's probably getting the most of it is Angel Reese because of how she go about herself every day, making it about her. Nobody likes that. It's basically like narcissistic narcissism that's coming from her, and, and people don't like it. And that's the only person. Now, DJ A. Carrington, she has a couple of things that happen with her, and and uh and Caitlin Clark that made people despise her and she has some other moments that's but other than those two people I haven't seen anybody coming at the the black women athlete for how they play the game or you know I, for for the most part everybody I know loves Angel Wilson so I don't get when they're coming in and she has this whole you know her whole you know speech that she did with this with um who she did it with again um she did it with tyler our times her mvp conversation unanimous mvp you won an unanimous mvp i think some other people could have won unanimous awards this year who didn't and i will say damn that might be racism let's find out who voted for angel reese when she didn't deserve getting a vote for she got an mvp vote so for a team that was under 500 all year, like, that's the nonsense that we had to deal with this year in this league. I, mean, I don't, I don't, I never heard anybody say, Asia Wilson is a bad person. Asia Wilson, we don't like her. You know, for the most part, it's been really good. Uh, let's, uh, like, this is the difference between this day and age of soft, entitled generation of thinking that everything has to be so soft for them, for them to get through. Like, everybody's dealing with shit. There's people in real life dealing with real life shit. Y'all dealing with people talking about y'all about basketball and little things after that. 
and y'all find a way to make it a, like the worst thing that possibly happened. Let's see, man. What Michael Jordan said in his Hall of Fame speech, he said, for someone like me who achieved a lot, you look for any kind of message that people might say or do to motivate you to play basketball at the highest level because that's when I feel I excelled my best. Use what people are saying against you to help motivate you to be better. Like, that's what the greatest person of, the greatest basketball player of our era did. Anything you said, he don't even have to say shit. And that mother found a way to make it seem like you said it anyway. He didn't care. He used it. He used it to make him better. But this generation just got, it's so soft. This participation trophy generation is so damn, so everybody has to feel, let's build up your morale. Let's make you, even though you're on the opposite team, let's make you feel great. No, that's not what competitive sports is about. It's about getting in your head, making you play awful so my team can win. And that's what these fans, that's what, this, that's what they could do before, before they're getting thrown out the games for every little thing nowadays. If that fan don't touch you, they say a little bit of words, how to bark back, or go out there and bust their team ass and come back and talk shit. But this, I just don't get it, man. It's it's, it's different, man. I, uh, let's see, man. Uh, as a black woman, we grew up a, a lot of time with our parents telling us, you got to be 10 times. It's hard just to get your foot in the door, let alone stand out. I felt that more this year than ever. This year has just really shown that you have to work your ass off in order for people to even look at you. That's, that's, how, that's, that's, that's what it's always been. You always had to work your ass off for people to really look at you. Like, I don't get it. Like, do you want to be the villain? You say, we're going to be the villains. I'm going to be the villain. I'm okay with that to win a championship. But then you come back and you want the self-pity. I don't understand it. And it's just, it's becoming aggravating and frustrating to, to hear them cry about this day after day after day. Just go play basketball and win games. Tune out the nonsense. Fuck what people think about you. Put your phone down. Put Instagram down. Don't let the haters or the trolls get to you. What what, what I look like worrying about with this motherfucker that don't even know me with five followers. <laughs> think about me or say about me. They're not even real enough to have a real profile that you we are getting in our feelings about what these people are saying. I just don't get it. I don't like it. I, I hope that she finds inner peace with herself. She seems to say it, but then also contradicts it in a lot of the, you know, in in her in her um speech or you know, in her interview. But she's an amazing player on a team that has a good chance to come back two to one this series and win this series and go back to the finals and go for the three peat. With all this crying and stuff going on and not well the fans well the fans don't have to be there. Y'all can go back to making 60k and not having anybody in the in the stadium, and then y'all saying oh, nobody supports us. I don't care how to support. They like they say, it don't matter what long. It don't matter how much what they're. It don't matter long as they're talking about y'all. Take it. There's no such thing as bad controversy. No such thing as bad talk. Embrace it. Long as they're talking about you, that's a good thing. Good, bad, whatever. Like. 
embrace it. That's all I have to say about this. This is point guard perspective. Come on out of podcast. This is weighing in on Asia Wilson and her um, interview after being a unanimous MVP. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this, man. Is is she doing too much? Is the is these players just too soft nowadays? Like, or is it really a problem like that that's going on? I don't think so. I think this is sports. It's competitiveness. It's what happens. But I don't know. I want to hear y'all opinions, man. Let me know what y'all think about this whole Aja Wilson situation and how she feel and all these other players in the W are feeling in their voice and their complaints and their opinions about what's going on now. I, I, I like to hear it from other perspectives, not just mine or Rudy's. I like to hear y'all what y'all think. Y'all weigh in. This is Come On Now, the podcast, Point Guard Perspective with Nick. Y'all hit that follow button, subscribe. We are getting closer and closer to 6K of subscribers. We are nothing without y'all. We appreciate y'all. Thank you.